I, three weeks ago, I was seated with my cousin Marcus, P, little P2 boy. It was the September school holidays, and I was seated with him in his house, watching him study. And I said, Marcus, do you want to go out and play football? Coco Crispin, I cannot play football. I said, why? Are you sick? Are you, are you ill? Are you injured? No, Coco, I got homework. What do you mean, homework? Oh, uh, Coco, my teacher, she gave me homework for my entire week. Every day, I must do this amount of homework. And he promptly took out from his school bag entire files of worksheets. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, my gosh, that's a lot of work for a, just for a, just an eight-year-old boy. Then I realized something. I saw next to that pile of worksheets, I saw an assessment book. And I said, so that is that for is that given to you by your teacher? No, Coco. That is given by mommy. <laughs> what? <laughs> mommy want me to do better. Got common test after holiday. Oh my gosh! I was thinking to myself, this kid had it worse than me when I was in school. Not only did he have school work, but he also had work from his parents. And I suspect he's on a lot of tuition as well. All because his mother wanted him to be the top of the class. Why? Because she thought that everybody else in that class was all his fellow competitors, just like how all the competitors are here for this contest. <laughs> all fellow competitors. And he needed to get first place. She didn't care whether the boy wanted to play football, had time for television, had time to socialize with friends. Ironically, I found out that just not long ago, the Singapore government had removed ranking systems from primary and secondary schools only for parents to come back and say, we want the ranking system back. I thought that was pretty ironic in itself. So it got me thinking, parents these days, we are all thinking about an eye for an eye. That we always look as our we always look at the person on the other side of the room as an opponent, the people in this other room as competition, as fair game. I was reflecting on it, and I recently I saw I read about a man who actually espoused this idea of an eye for an eye, and I realized the silliness of the statement that he made. Now, for those of you who are familiar, the saying goes, "An eye for an eye." Two for and two, right? But there's not saying an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. <laughs> does anybody? <laughs> does anybody? Else, does anybody out there? Although some of you I know made a mistake with the phrase, but does any of you out there know who said it? Gandhi. Gandhi. <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi. Now, we all know a lot about Mohandas Gandhi. They call him Mahatma. Mahatma means venerable. But not much is said about another man called Harilal Gandhi who is the <laughs> elder son of Mohandas Gandhi. Now, Mahatma Gandhi was a great man. It is no doubt about it. But what is not known was that when he was fighting for the independence of India, he, put, he had four children. He put all his four children in a contest, not like this, but in a real serious <laughs> contest, about who could fight for the independence of India as well, as much as he could. And so what happened when he was still in South Africa learning to be a lawyer, he had a son, sorry, practicing as a lawyer, he had a son, Hari Lal. And Hari Lal was a bright young man who wanted to be a barrister like his father. But no, it was the time that Gandhi wanted to return back to India. And so he told Hari Lal, you cannot be a lawyer. Furthermore, you can't go to England and be a lawyer. We are fighting against England. How could you go to England and be a lawyer? <laughs> so instead... Hari Lal was forced to follow his dad back to India to fight for independence. And while Mahatma Gandhi was out there espousing his truths, sitting down in the company of other people, fighting for the peace, sorry, fighting for separation from the British, Hari Lal ran around, he gave pamphlets to people who didn't know what they were fighting for. He went to jail for, on behalf of his father for 
speaking truths about the government that they didn't want to know. He spent five years in total in jail. And the irony is this, that when India gained independence, we all know about Mahama Gandhi, but we do not know anything about his eldest son, Harilal Gandhi. What is even more appalling to me was that when Mahama Gandhi was assassinated, he reserved, he, re, the highest honour was reserved for him. He was cremated at the Ganges, which is the highest honour for any Hindu. <coughs> While Hari Lal, penniless because he couldn't be a lawyer, he didn't have any other skills, died face down in a ditch, wearing another man's clothes. His poverty, because his father wanted him to compete for an idea that wasn't his. It got me thinking about our children and ourselves. Why is it that we live in a country where our parents, or where parents, I hope none of you are like that, treat your children like gladiators fighting for what? For your ideas. For you, because of your idea, you missed out. You failed to go to university. Your children had to fight to enter university for you. Why is it that we can't let our children play when they're supposed to play, be what they want to be? Every day, I work as a teacher. So many of my students come out and tell me, I am in a profession that is of my parents' choosing because they wanted to compete with each other. They forced me to compete with my peers instead of I want to be an engineer, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a scientist. No, I have to be a lawyer, I have to be a scientist because my parents wanted me to do so. Why is it that we are enforcing an I for an I with each other. My solution is this, very simply. We live in a new century. In a new century, we must learn that cooperation, not contest, is the way of life. And my encouragement to you, and by telling you this story, is such that we don't make the mistakes for to incorporate this in our children, that we shouldn't force our children to contest like two lions in a den, but rather we should teach them that everything, everybody is sacred. That cooperation is key and that each of us matters to a society just like you. So, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Do you agree with this statement? I personally disagree. And I hope that in the last five to seven minutes, I have, I have um, helped you understand that you should disagree as well. Back to you, Contest Chair. <laughs>